What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and today we've got a little bit of a different episode. We're going on a road trip. Stick around. Recently I was in a motorcycle shop looking for some gear and while I was in there someone approached me and they said hey I recognize you aren't you Brandon Lund from the YouTube channel? Well that pretty much caught me off guard because that's only happened one other time and it's not like I'm this huge massive YouTube channel but this person and I have been communicating back and forth together he is a fan of the channel and he wants to donate a Harbor Freight welder to the channel for me to test out because he knows those are some of the things that I do so I am gonna go meet up with him now and that's where we're headed we're almost there guys I'm a few minutes out this is a little surreal. I've never uh, had this happen. When I started my YouTube channel, I never really expected that it would grow into what it's become. And it's actually grown into a channel that not only I think people like, but I really enjoy it. It gives me a whole new rekindled interest in the trades because quite honestly, I was probably 10 years ago starting to lose interest and this whole YouTube thing has kind of given me a whole new uh, avenue of enjoyment because people you know it's and it's interacting with you guys that has actually uh, drawn this uh, interest back out of me because uh, I think when you do something for a while you just tend to take uh, your skill set for for granted and I think that that's kind of what I did for a while and when I posted one of my first videos uh, people were commenting how they thought it was great and they really liked it and so from that point forward it kind of gave me a satisfaction knowing that I was helping other people that are looking to get started in it and uh, looking to get involved in it so yeah I think this channel has probably helped me um, maybe if not more as it's helped other people because it's just rekindled a, a new interest in me for the trades his name is Gabe he's a great guy and like I said he reached out to me he said he's got a brand new Harbor Freight welder that he wanted to donate to the channel and he knows that we do these types of things and we review stuff on the channel and uh, hopefully when I go there uh, he'll want to be uh, in the video if he doesn't that's fine not a problem but if he does that's great we'll uh, we'll put him on the channel if he wants to be on it that sounded good what's going on man how's it going how you doing good you care if i film i don't care cool the gun stopped working yeah so i was in the middle of a project yeah so i had to go pick up another one and i bought the warranty for the second one. Oh, nice <laughs> and when that one crapped the bed yeah i just went and switched it out and it's been that's awesome. And, do you I want, tried selling it on Craigslist, but nobody answered the ad. So, do you want to be on the channel at some point? Maybe I, think I can get <laughs> you on the channel. Do you care if I use any of this footage right now on the channel? Oh, no, I don't do it or whatever. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. Obviously, I'm not going to give away any identifying information yeah. or anything like that. Yep. So, let me go open up the uh, back of the truck. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I tried selling it to recoup some money out of it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll definitely, way, we'll definitely be making videos yep. with it. And that way, maybe you can show people some tips and stuff. Yeah. They don't know about these. Yeah, see, I mean. I wish there was more out there when I first started. It's brand new. These. Did you even open it? No. Nope. Oh my God, As dude. Touched. That's awesome. <laughs> man, I appreciate it. No and problem. I appreciate you being a huge fan of the channel. Yep. That means a lot. I'll tell you, this is my first time ever. This is my first time ever um, meeting up with somebody. There was only one other yep. time I was at um, Windsor Fair last year, and I'm walking through the crowd, and I hear someone holler, Brandon! And I look up, and I see a guy waving to me, and yep. I'm like, do I know you? <laughs> and he comes down, and he says, I'm a fan of your channel. <laughs> like, it was just kind yeah, of surreal. Yeah, I was here buying a helmet. Especially when you were here, ago, and you, yeah. it was kind of surreal hearing, yeah. you, hearing you say that. But but I heard you say guy. something, and I was like, that always sounds familiar, and I looked over, and I'm like, oh, okay. That's the guy yeah. from YouTube. So, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, using this. I, I don't know if it'll get in this week's video, but it'll definitely be in next week. So, um, I've got your number, so, yeah. so I'm going to get some shirts, I'll get you some stickers oh, and stuff. And if you want to be onto the channel sometime... Um, I'll, I'll have you come over to the shop and we'll do some stuff together if you want. That'd be cool. Show awesome, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm still learning myself. Yeah. Because yeah. I picked up one of those, uh, the Metal Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. B140Ts. Yes. Yeah. I don't have 
access right. to 220. Yet, oh yeah, so yeah. Yep. We're in the middle of trying to look for access. And that's the uh, that's the thing about these. A lot of people they're like, well, they're not. You know, I even ran it on a 30 foot, just a regular extension. Yeah. Mode, and I had no problems with it. Dude, this is what I started out on. Yep. This is one of the welders that I first started out on. So yeah, probably still the same as 20 uh, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got nothing bad to say. So like this yep. this little over temp sensor thing right here i, I never I, uh, had that click off oh i did a yep. bunch of times but being young um i ended up taking that whole thing and bypassing it uh, i i mean i totally yep. abused it so i got nothing bad to say about these no i don't about have these at all so. anything bad to say yeah just i wish they would make the replacement parts for yeah yeah these ones yeah because all i all the other ones really probably needed was just the lining yeah yeah but the only one they had titanium one for one of the titanium oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah yep yep and i thought about modifying it to fit but i'm like i ain't cutting no <laughs> that's what i did to buy i yeah. took it i mean i took it all apart i abused it so bad i mean but obviously uh you know I, it got me started in it so if that's if that's what keeps somebody from uh either getting into welding or not i say go for it. i mean i had back surgery a couple years ago and then i had some downtime and yep. I just I was truly bored and I was like you know what I did a little bit when I was in high school and then um, there's a guy up there Colin he wants to be on <laughs> see see <laughs> yeah so there's all kinds of content down yep. here in uh, downtown Waterville so plus police activities yeah I guess so huh <laughs> All right, man. Yep. Well, cool. Yeah. I'll let you get going. Enjoy it. I we'll, will. Uh, I'll get you. On, I'll get you on the channel, and yep. uh, I appreciate it. All right. Have Thanks, man. One. So that was pretty cool, guys. Uh, that was super nice of him. So let's head back now to the workshop. We'll get that thing opened up, and we'll start doing some welding. So here it is, guys. It's a Flux Core uh, 125 welder. It says it includes everything you need to start welding right out of the box. Even comes with some wire. So. This is gonna be awesome to, to try out. I had one like this. This is probably like the one that I started out on many, many, many years ago. If you guys have ever heard me talk about how I bypassed the, you know, the uh, temperature sensor and all that stuff, that was like this welder. So curious to see how this is gonna do. Now this would be perfect for you guys that only have uh, 120 volt power because this is not a 240 volt machine. So let's look at a little bit of it. Uh, 125 amp output. It's got a 20% duty cycle, meaning that in a 10 minute time frame, you can run this for two minutes before you need to stop welding or before it will cut out. So duty cycle is always based on 10 minutes. So if it was a 50% duty cycle, then that means you could weld for five minutes and you gotta let it rest for five minutes. This means you can weld for two minutes continuous before you gotta let it rest in a 10 minute period. So you'd have to let it rest for eight minutes. Doesn't require shielding gas. And this is what I tell you guys all the time, the perfect welder for outdoor use and dirty metals. So that's what Flux Core is great for because it doesn't blow away your coverage gas. So if you only got 120 volt and you weld it outside, this is an awesome welder for that. Weighs just 38 pounds. Overload protection to prevent overload heating. Got the wire brush. That hood isn't the best of hoods, but you know what? Let's open this thing up and try it out because this is what started me out in my whole welding career. So let's see what it looks like. But before we can start opening this up and welding, guys, I got a real quick fabrication project I need to do because I don't know if you can tell that the video quality is maybe a little bit better. I've got an upgraded camera and I need to build a mount for it. So this is my camera setup, guys, that I normally use and that you, I normally film the episodes with. Now, you can see here what it's got is a like a quick disconnect so I can remove the camera off the base. So this little metal plate piece, that's what I need to build for the camera that I'm using right now. So you can see how that works. Then there's a little cam gear and that's it. That just holds the camera in. So I can detach it and attach it, but I need a way to mount this camera that I'm filming with right now onto this stand. So that's what we're gonna work on. So this is gonna be pretty easy to build, guys. Uh, it's only gonna take me a minute, probably just like one or two tools to, to do this. Um, the, out of the plate, I'm gonna use a piece of aluminum and then I'm gonna thread it, tap it, 
and then screw this into it and then this will allow me to to mount the camera that i'm using right now which is a gopro it'll mount right into this Let's see i got a bunch of scrap metal here so i think i'll use like this piece of this aluminum yeah, keep it nice and light bring it over the band saw we'll mark it out and we'll start cutting it so what i'll do is i'll start off by measuring the width right now so that's what it needs to be I'm not gonna even break out a tape measure. I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple because this is all it has to be because that's what's on there now. So I'll make the shape that, that size. So now we'll just take that and I'm just gonna scribe it into this right here. So I'll make a couple marks. Just like that. Hopefully you guys can see those. And now I'll just trace it in deeper using my scribe. And then we'll end up doing something like this for this direction. And that's it guys, right there. That's what we gotta cut out. I got my eye protection on and I got my ear protection on. And we're gonna cut this. If you haven't seen how I built this portable bandsaw stand, I'll have a link up above, you guys can check it out. So now I'm gonna smooth the edges off a little bit, guys. Now, you can't use a grinding wheel on aluminum because what'll happen is that if you do, if you use like your, you know, your regular grinding wheel that you'd grind steel with, what'll happen is that it'll fill up with aluminum shards and then the disc will eventually end up exploding. So clean up your aluminum, either use a flap wheel or use a file and I'm just using a file because it's such a small piece. So now I just gotta put a hole in the center, thread it, then we can screw that into it. To find center, we just go corner to corner, make a mark, do the same thing, corner to corner, make a mark, and there's our center point where those two lines intersect. Take a center punch, Put it on it, give it a hit. Now we just make, need to make sure that we drill this hole the appropriate size so we can thread this uh, stem into it. So now we know we need to drill that hole, but how do we know what size drill bit to use? Well, I know that the threads on that are quarter 20, so I just go to the website Lincoln Machine and it'll tell you the recommended tap drill size uh, to use for regular tap. So scroll down here, try to find quarter 20. There's quarter 20 right there, and it says we should use a number 7 drill bit, or the next fractional size would be 13 ths So that's what we need for a bit, 13 ths Then I just go to my handy dandy drill index and find the one that's 13 ths And there it is, you can see they're all numbered, so that's the one we need right there. So we'll chuck that up in the drill, get it drilled out. I'll tell you what guys, I love this drill press that we built. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link up above. I, <laughs> I know I always link this uh, video to this, but this is just an incredible uh, piece of equipment that I picked up. And I've basically taken a regular drill press that was junk, cut it up, and welded a steel plate on it. And now we've got a mag drill mounted to it. So there, my drill bits chucked up, and so it doesn't spin all around, we'll throw this into a drill vise. There we are. 
tighten it up. Yeah, throw on my safety glasses. Easy as that. Now we just gotta tap it. I'm also gonna chamfer out the hole a little bit using a chamfering bit. That'll just kind of deburr it, give it a better finish. Yeah, nice and smooth. All right, I'm just gonna find a quarter 20 tap. That looks like it could be it right there. Quarter 20, pretty good eyes, huh guys? It's like I might have done this a couple times. All right. Probably don't even need tapping fluid, this hole's so shallow. Let me throw this in the vise. There we are. Just like that. Look at that. Made for it. Perfect. Now I can put this up on the stand and we can start filming. And there it is guys, all it takes is just one little screw right here and it's all good. But I had to kind of like put all these other little cobbled on pieces just to get the orientation right. But yeah, it's all set now. So yeah, now I can uh, aim it and you know do whatever. All right guys, let's get this thing opened up and set up and start welding. opened up all right. oh wow see yeah it's even got a chart on the door so that's kind of nice to tell you what to weld with let's uh, get the handle on it and then we can move forward and check out all the features and looks like it comes with a spool of wire and it also comes with a face shield so if you don't have a hood you could always use this. I've never had good luck with these, I can tell you that, but it's there if you need it. And it also comes with a shade nine lens for it. And it looks to be pretty self-explanatory as far as what needs to be done. There's a bunch of instructions on the inside telling you how to load it. And it looks like you can also load up 35 thousandths wire with this welder also, which is kind of nice. Let's see, put that on there, that looks right, and then the spring, then that, then that, that's it. You just want a little bit of tension on this so it doesn't completely unreal on its own. There we go, just like that. Now I'm just going to cut the wire so it's nice and smooth on the end so it feeds through the liner good. Stick it in through here. This is your roller drive tensioning system. There. And it looks like there's two size rollers down here. One for 30 thousandths wire and one for 35 thousandths. Keep a loose tension on it so it doesn't bird's nest. What I find works good for these is unscrew the nozzle and then take out the contact tip so the wire will feed down through this whole assembly a lot easier. You can see here, right on the front, it says it'll take 30 thousandths or 35 thousandths flux core and it will weld from 18 gauge to 3 16 steel. And it's for mild steel, low alloy steel, uh, not for aluminum or stainless. So now I will just take it and plug it into a dedicated 120 volt outlet. Now we'll turn it on. Ooh, it's pretty quiet, you can hear the fan come on. Now we'll pull the trigger on the gun and the wire should start feeding through the liner. And I got it turned down. 
I got it turned down slow because I don't want any problems. So you can see how it's slipping. See how the wires the spinning? So we'll put a little tension on it. Put a little more. There we go. It's still slipping a little bit, but we'll we'll adjust that here in a minute. Maybe there's too much tension here. And there it is. Okay. Perfect. So now what we'll do is we'll thread on our contact tip and then we'll screw on our nozzle. So now we got to set the right tension on this roller back here because if we don't have good tension and it's set up properly what will happen is, is let's say that your wire sticks while you're pulling the trigger it's just going to ball all up inside this machine if it's not allowed to have some slip and you don't want that that's called a bird's nest so the way that I see if I have the right tension is I grab the wire with gloves on, squeeze it with my fingers and see if it'll push through it. And it does. See that? So let me back it off a little bit. We want it to slip just a little bit. Okay, right there. I'm able to stop the wire if I squeeze extra hard, but for the most part, it'll push through my fingers. See, I am able to stop it, watch. And when I hold that, all that wheel's doing is just spinning. So that's what you want for attention right there. Be able to have it just barely push through your fingers while you're squeezing it. There's that. So this welder is all set up. It's ready to weld, guys. And inside, guys, is actually a chart. In one of my last videos, I showed you this way about holding it from a block of wood. So it's saying uh, between two and three inches away that the wire will start to bend if it hits the block of wood. Uh, and that's where you want the, to set the tension at. So that's another way of doing it. I just prefer to do it with my fingers like I just showed you. But there's a whole setup guide right here that'll tell you uh, what to do. I've explained it all anyways. And then there's also a little weld chart on the back to tell you, you know, what a good weld is or um, what the problem is. Let's get to welding. So that I have a baseline, guys, to see how this welder welds, I'm going to build another set of these clamps. So I'm going to cut up this and modify it. We're going to weld a shoulder bolt to it. Then we'll give it a try and see how it works. Weld it up and kind of compare one welder to the next. I'll start out by taking one of my other clamps that I've already cut up and we'll use that as a template to cut this one. Kind of put a line across, something like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to weld one of these shoulder bolts onto it. But somebody also mentioned that you could use uh, dowel from McMaster Car. It's sized by this and it might be a little bit less money. So that's another option that you could do is use round dowel. But I have a bunch of these shoulder bolts that I bought uh, for just making different fixtures like we are on this fixture table. And uh, I'm just using this. So that's what we'll be using today. But they tell me you can use dowel. I just haven't tried it. I'm also going to cut off the threads of this bolt because we don't need it. So now we got to set up our welder. So the material we're welding, you can see right there, I don't know if you can see it, it's 3 16 So we'll go over to our welder and we can say at 3 16 it needs to be, the switch needs to be set to max and we're using 30 thousandths wire so we got to set the setting to nine so max nine so that's gonna pretty much max this out so max 
and then that's wire feed speed so we'll set that to nine now what i want to try to do is i want to try to match the angle of the ones we've already built so that's pretty much it right there that's really darn close I've gone ahead and beveled back the edge of the clamp a little bit so the weld's got a place to go. And I also ground the top part of this shoulder bolt to get rid of that black oxide finish so we don't have a problem. The weld is only is going to be as good as your prep. So if you cut corners on prep, the weld is going to be inferior. So take your time when you're doing this stuff to make sure that you have good fit up that your parts are clean, that your metal is beveled, and everything is ready to go. Welding is a lot like painting. There's a lot of prep work that leads up to the point of painting. The part of painting actually goes on pretty quick when you're putting paint on the walls. It's everything else that takes all the time leading up to it. And welding is a lot like that. So the first thing we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna get this tacked up. And once everything is tacked and it looks good, then we will finish welding it out. Now, because I've got this pin set into the table, I should be, well, actually, let me just clamp it right to our workpiece. There we go, just like that. Now we know we got a good connection. So I'm gonna center this up on the shoulder bolt, and we're gonna call that pretty good right there, and we'll tack it up, throw a tack on this side right here. Oh, my first impression was it's pretty smooth. And it's a good habit to trim the end of your wire like this to get the little ball off the end of it. All right, let's weld this out and then we'll take, I'll bring you in for a close up and look at it. The one thing that feels a little weird for this guy is that when you let off the trigger at the very end, the wire kind of sticks to it. So that's kind of, it's kind of odd. I, I don't know why it does that. It's not like it's a big deal, but it's, it's definitely a learning curve. And here it is, guys. Now, this is the one we just welded right here. I'll show you the weld. This is the one we did with the Fronius. Now, I will tell you right now that the two clamps that we did in one of our last episodes, which is this one and this one, although these look and feel identical, these are a little different. Uh, this new one I just bought. And you can see, you can lay it on top and it's all the same. But when I went into the store, the one thing that I noticed was that this top jaw and the bottom jaw, where they come where they come together before I cut it, they didn't line up perfectly. It was like one of the jaws was bent compared to the other. The ones, the two that we just did, uh, like in last week's episode, those were fine. This one was actually bent, but look at the difference between the two. This one is actually stamped China. These are the two we just did. This one doesn't have that stamping. So this one obviously came off a different uh, lot or assembly lot number, but yeah, that's, that's it right there. I'm completely happy with how this came out. And once you build your fab table, then you can just clamp whatever it is you want down to your fixture table and adjust it just like you would a pair of ice grips. Bring it to it, and then just give it a little bit of tension, and there you go. That's not going anywhere. So yeah, in my opinion, how is this Harbor Freight welder, and let's say, how does it compare to a you know two thousand dollar welder? Well, they do weld, obviously, quite a bit differently. They have du different duty cycles and different functions, but I can tell you right now that this is my first ever weld with this machine. And the more you weld with it, it's just like anything. Uh, the more you do it, the better you get. Every welder is different, every machine. So 
you know, it would take me, you know, a couple hours, I'd have the knack after using this machine of how the arc starts, how it stops, and how it runs, and how that wire runs. I've never used that wire before, so, yeah. Is it a good investment if you guys go and buy one? I would say yes, because I had one just like this, identical, uh, and I use this like crazy. Uh, like I said in one of my episodes, I actually took uh, this right here, this overload sensor, opened up the welder and bypassed it uh, so that I didn't have to worry about the duty cycle, so that it gave it a 100% duty cycle. Do not do that. Uh, I was young and stupid and lucky. Uh, I was lucky I didn't burn down the house or burn up the welder or whatever. So yeah, don't do that. But uh, I will say that this is a welder just like this that got me started into welding. Obviously it does have some limitations because uh, like the, the whips on these, they're short. Uh, and I don't know how it is to get parts. So if your liner wears out, I'm not sure about that, how easy it is to get parts. And this is not like a readily replaceable whip. Like on this one right here, uh, this is just comes apart. This one is all serviceable, all the pieces and parts. So. so like I said to you guys in a recent episode, there's no shame in the game for having a Harbor Freight welder, guys. Don't just say, well, I've only got a flex core. I've only got, uh, you know, MIG or whatever it is. It's whatever you got just get good at it learn it and have fun and enjoy it because if i had never picked up you know welding years and years and years ago i may not be doing some of the things that i do today now i'll share a little quick story with you that i started thinking about as i was actually welding in this episode so that welder like i said it's identical to the one that i used to have probably 30 years ago well i was doing a bridge in new hampshire and i had to weld on long story short i had to weld on some posts or some steel columns onto the side of the bridge piers and then I was going to tie a like a party barge or a pontoon boat to the side of that and keep all the tools on it. We were doing some structural work on a bridge. Well long story short I actually brought that welder onto a commercial job to do bridge work to do welding. Granted it wasn't anything structural that was permanent part of the bridge but I actually brought that on a job that welder onto a commercial construction job so that I could, you know, I had the portability, I could actually weld up these brackets that I needed and all these columns that I needed to fasten to the side of the uh, bridge piers. So yeah, obviously it worked for that and I had no issue and I used it on that job just because it was super portable. Uh, the bridge was super long and getting a bunch of leads and everything dragged down under the bridge of, to do the work that I needed to do would have been a huge hassle. So I actually brought that down, ran a 110 volt plug underneath the bridge, did the work that I needed to do and got out of there, got it done. So yeah, they definitely have their, their places. Uh, it's probably more of a hobby welder, but like I said, I've used this on commercial jobs. So. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank the viewer for donating this. You have no idea how much this means to me. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of humbling to, to be looked at that way that somebody wants to donate that. So thank you, bud. I appreciate it. Till next week, guys. I will see you Friday. If you want to know about any of the tools that I'm using, I'll have links down below. New videos every Friday. Like, comment, subscribe. Till then, guys. Stay safe. See ya.